blessing you pour out. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to when the darkness, when the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will stay. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glory. Treat him, shoo ye eat him, shine young hair, shoo ye eat him, shoo ye eat him, shine young hair, young water, shoo ye eat him, shine young. Blessed be. Blessed be the name today. Blessed be your name, Jesus. I could sing of your love forever. 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 Over the mountains and the sea, your river rides with me. And now I'll open up my heart and let the healer set me free. I'm happy to be in the and now all day. Your love forever. I can see 
King of your love forever. Oh, I feel like dancing. It's foolishness, I know. But when the world can see the light, they will dance with joy like I'm dancing now. They got your merch with them. You get to my heart. Do the shoe I get to me. I'm a keeper of the shoe. The shoe get ready. Oh, 
주리의 존귀하신 주님 모든 영광을 받을 합당하신 우리 주님 지능 영광 받아 주시옵소서 To you alone who is worthy to receive the honor and the praise and the glory Get the glory because you deserve it because you deserve it May the Lamb of God receive the full inheritance of his suffering because he is worthy. Jesus, we have nothing without you. We are anything, but if anything, because of you. So we pray that God, as we give our songs, our prayer, the sermon, every part of this service, we give it to you as our offering as our delight because we love you and I pray it would move your heart today so deeply I pray it would move your heart we love you so much we give you the glory and in Jesus name we pray amen in this time we'll continue our time of worship with the Apostles Creed please feel free to do it in the language that is best comfortable for you Let us in one voice, one heart, one spirit declare together. One, two, three. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. And he suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I'd like to invite our congregational prayer speaker. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for calling us to this sanctuary this morning to worship you and praise you. Thank you for giving us the opportunities to serve you and your people on earth while we are eager to go back to the homeland of you. Father, please let us keep faith in you more than what the people of faith, such as Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, and Sarah did according to their own faith. Father, help us to experience and witness the growth of our faith every day and every moment. 
please help us to see your invisibility in a visible way so that we may confidently trust in you in the unknown future. Father, by faith, help us to give birth to obedience to you so that our life prove that our faith is alive. Father, now it is the time to listen to your living words. Please help us to open our mind and soul so that we may be faithful and obedient enough to trust and obey you. Please anoint the preacher, Professor Byung Moon Kim, with the Holy Spirit. I pray all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, scripture reading is, keep on loving one another as brothers and sisters. Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, for by so doing, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. Continue to remember those in prison as if you, as if you were together with them in prison, and those who are mistreated as if you yourselves were suffering. Marriage should be honored by all, and the marriage bed kept pure, for God will judge the adulterer and all sexually immoral, sexually immoral. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have, because, because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? Amen. We have been meditating on the book of Hebrews for the past couple of months. So far we have considered the questions such as, who is Jesus Christ? And what does Jesus work mean in relation to the Old Testament, particularly the sacrificial system? Now, Now the last chapter, chapter 13, closes the book with a very practical encouragement to the believers in dealing with the things we face in our everyday life. Almost all the epistles of the New Testament, including Romans, are written in this pattern. That is, the, that is in the early part, questions such as, who is Jesus Christ? and what is the real meaning of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, they are handled. And in the latter part, mm -hmm. the epistles give advice on how to live everyday life as a Christian. Therefore, after the promise of salvation, we now hear the command for the way of life as Christians. At this point, we may have confusion. As a Christian, when we hear the command to live like this, we, fa we fall into a sense of guilt because we do not live like that every day. Then we may fall into the trap of returning to the law that leads us to try to achieve salvation through our own efforts again and again. In today's text, Hebrews chapter 13, 1 to 6, there are five commands. Are these five commands absolutely obligatory? Or is it something we don't have to, to, to keep all the time? If we do not keep them, are we still saved? Why did the Lord give us these commands? If I jump to the conclusion uh, quickly, that this chapter of Hebrews 13 tells us what our life should be after we know who Jesus is. Now this is like an execution file in your PC, .exe, that gives us direction on how we live in our day-to-day -day life. It is like a field manual, they call the FM, to soldiers. Because a soldier is already a soldier, he leads the life of soldier. 
In other words, imitating life of a soldier does not change your status to a soldier. In Acts chapter 9, there's a scene where Saul captures believers in Jesus, putting them in prison and even giving them up to death. But then he meets Jesus. One day, while Saul was on his way to arrest Christians in Damascus, he met Jesus on the road. A strong light shone from heaven, and Saul heard the voice of the Lord. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Saul asked, Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting. Then he asked Jesus, Lord, what shall I do? After meeting Jesus and getting to know him, we have no choice but to ask, Lord, what shall I do? The issue we are dealing with today is not a matter of debate as to whether we should keep these commands or not. This is an appeal to believers who have already experienced the grace of Jesus Christ's redemption. Lord, what shall I do? Today's message is the answer given to the believer's question. Lord, what shall I do? The first command is continue to love brothers and sisters. The first word that Lord gives us is to keep on loving one another as brothers and sisters. In the book of Romans, after explaining the principle of justification by faith, chapter 12 tells us to present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God. And one way to present our bodies as a living sacrifice is to love. Romans 12.10 says, Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Who is to receive this brotherly love, which is called the Philadelphia in Greek? And we, we know there's a city, Philadelphia, in the USA too. What special qualifications do we need to have to receive this love? In Matthew chapter 5, verse 44, our Lord told us to love even our enemies. But who's our enemy? Is North Korea's dear leader, Kim Jong-un, our enemy? In fact, our enemy is among those who are very close to us. It could be our family members. It could be your mother-in-law, or your daughter-in-law, or son-in-law, or your brother-sister. Don't we even say in Korean, "이 왼수"? That's a, that's our enemy. Or a co-worker in our in our in our ministry. Those who are working very close together with us. The first word that Lord gives us in Hebrews 13 is to keep on loving brothers and sisters. It is expressed as a keep on loving. Why? Loving once or twice may be easy, but keeping on loving someone is not easy. It takes your willpower, and not just that. The help of the Holy Spirit is desperately needed to keep on loving someone. But why love? It is because our Lord Jesus, who offered up prayers and petitions with loud cries and tears for the very brothers and sisters, to the point of giving up his life. Therefore, we cannot help but love them. The second command is, do not forget to show hospitality to strangers. The early church put special emphasis on this hospitality. In 1 Timothy chapter, 5, chapter 3, verse 2, and Titus 1, 8, one of the qualifications of an elder is to show hospitality to strangers. In the second half, of, the, of today's verse 2, it says that by doing so, some people have shown hospitality to angels 
without knowing it. An exchange, an example is found in Genesis 18. Abram was under the oaks of a memory. He gave hospitality to three strangers passing by. And the Bible tells that these three men were Jehovah himself and two angels. Upon receiving these guests, Abram tells Sarah to bake bread using a dough from three sias of a fine flour. According to scholars, these three sias of flour, it weighs about 16 kilograms for three guests. Baking bread with that much of flour means that Abram expected these guests to stay forever or the, they can take the bread with them when they leave. Abram also chose a choice tender cough and had his servant cook for them. At this time, God tells Abraham that he will have a son in one year. Also, there are several examples in the Bible which is, is, is an unaware hospitality for the strangers, such as those shown by Gideon, who met an angel of God, and also Manoah, who was promised a son named Samson from serving strangers. Especially in the early church, the term stranger mainly meant traveling evangelists or itinerant evangelists. At that time, it was not possible for most of the evangelists to stay in inns. So they used to stay mainly in the houses of the believers. In Luke chapter 9, verse 3 to 4, Jesus says to his disciples, Take nothing for the trip. Take no staff, no backpack, no bread, no money, no two coats, and whatever house you enter, stay there and leave from there. However, these days, there are few people around us who travel and evangelize and and we don't need the, to accommodate these uh, traveling evangelizers. So it is beneficial for us to think how these words can be applied to our lives. The students who come to the Sugwana campus, and especially the foreign students, they stay here for a few years and then leave. The SNU church was founded in 2003 by some SNU professors. I think it was our obedience to the word today that urged us to start the SNU church on campus. I believe that welcoming and serving these strangers, it is the same as treating angels as in today's message. In particular, foreign students have no choice but to live a life of stranger here. Another point is that you don't have to have missions in mind to serve strangers. It is said that Abraham also welcomed the angels unintentionally. I'd like to introduce one example of how we were able to show hospitality to a stranger while serving the SNU International Church. A student came to SNU in the late, uh, mid to late 2000s for a PhD program. As with most doctoral programs, he had a very strict advisor and worked hard towards his thesis. However, the advisor, after having read his thesis, said that the data processing was not statistically correct. Then he said, you should go to the undergraduate program and learn statistics and then come back and start writing your thesis all over again. Can you imagine the embarrassment the student had when he was told to learn statistics from the undergraduate course and rewrite his thesis all over again? Hearing this story, we immediately thought of a professor that we knew in the faculty of economics. In particular, he handled a lot of socioeconomic data for his research and well-versed in statistical treatment of data. So I contacted him. Then one of his graduate students was assigned to help this PhD student to 
process his thesis in a statistically correct way. Soon, this student finished statistically correct uh, thesis, and uh, he was able to return to his home country after successfully defending his thesis. Now he's working as a professor at the university in his home country. I think all students who come to SNU, whether Koreans or foreigners, are all our guests. Also, like the story of the Good Samaritan in Luke chapter 10, they are our neighbors. Verse 2 of today's chapter says that there are some people who entertain the angels while serving guests. I think the Lord gives us a way to serve the Lord by sending strangers to us. I hope that all of us worshiping today may receive the blessing to show hospitality, hospitality to strangers. I bless all our church members that we serve strangers with all our heart, treating angels in the meantime and enjoy the blessings that come to our all, entire family. Now the third word to us is to think of the prisoners. Remember those in prison as if you were there yourself. This is a translation from New Living Translation. Remember also those being mistreated as if you felt that their pain in your own bodies. It tells us to remember their pain as we feel their pain in our bodies. We can see that when the book of Hebrews was written, the persecution to Christians was very, very severe. And there were not a few people who were imprisoned because of the gospel. God urged believers to be with them and look out for them. The command in verse 3 tells us to go beyond the passive welcoming of strangers who come to us and to actively seek out those who are imprisoned and suffering. So this takes our active action. When was the last time I personally visited and comforted the imprisoned? I don't remember. Probably a very long, long time ago. I think it would be good to apply this message in a broader sense as well for us. Especially, especially there are many around us who suffer from unwanted diseases. Also, there are many people who suffer from the wounds in their heart. There are also many people who are abused all over the world. But surprisingly, there are many around us as well. God tells us to share the pain with these people as if we were in the place of suffering. In this regard, another foreign student story comes to my mind. All foreign students who come to SNU are instructed to take out personal health insurance. However, the monthly insurance fee can be a burden for some foreign students. So this student, this particular student also went without insurance. But one day she had a severe abdominal pain. She couldn't sleep. This pain was due to appendicitis. In Korean, it's a mengjangnyam. But she did not know it and did not go to the hospital because she did not have a proper medical insurance. Eventually, her appendix ruptured and she was brought to the hospital in an emergency. So a major surgery was needed, resulting in a much higher hospital bills. So we raised the money in cooperation with the Graduate Student Council to which the student belongs and a few other organizations. In this incident, our church has become a neighbor to that student. If there are people around you who are trapped in pain, I hope that we, you will be able to actively visit and help. And I know there are many among us who are actually doing this. The fourth word given to us as in verse four 
is to honor marriage. The Bible says to hold the marriage honorable and not to defile the marriage bed. The evangelical life is to cherish marriage. It is about protecting and cherishing the family that God has given us. I know a lot of students are unmarried. How should the unmarried people receive these words? You may think, I'm not married yet, so this doesn't apply to me. Also, you could use the cultural background you grew up in as an excuse to say that the standards for relationships are different where I came from. But today's word provides us all with the same standard and principles. There are too many sexual stimulations around us today. Compared to when I was young, there are way too many visual stimuli for young people. And exposure scenes that weren't allowed before are now readily available everywhere. How much exposure is there in each medium that is open to us through our personal mobile phones and various channels? However, I think that the human desire is the same even a thousand years ago or now. I remember hearing from a pastor back when I was in college who said, Unmarried young persons should consider a person of the other sex as their brother or sister, and the other person's future spouse. I think that statement is very valid still today. Of these many, one will become his or her spouse. Now, of course, the problem is that finding that particular person seems so difficult. How can young people remain pure? Psalm 119 verse 9 says, How can a young person stay on the path of purity by living according to your word? As in these words, it is important to guard ourselves with the word of the Lord. The last but the least, not the least part of today's exhortation is about money. The world, the world tells us that not to love money, but to be content with what we have. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, and Luke 16, 13 say, You cannot serve both God and money. Luke 12, 15 says, A man's life does not consist in the abundance of what he has. Also, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10 says, the love of money is the root of all evil. I would like to ponder upon this part a little more through the, through the eyes of students. When I look at the students at SNU, I see many whose purpose of study is to get the best specs. Isn't it because these specs can, link, can be linked to the wealth and comfort of the future? I remember the time, at uh, the title of the book written by the late elder Jong Ung Lee, who once served in our church, convenient but peaceful. This is the book that this uh, uh, elder wrote. And if your current study is merely a means of providing you with future wealth and convenience, you may end up becoming a slave to money. I remember the words of a pastor, Tim Haas, from the US, who gave a congratulatory remarks at the SNU graduation ceremony a few years back. He told the students not to say, I'll become a doctor, I'll become a lawyer, I'll become a Samsung man, I'll become this and that. He recommended not to define your life with nouns like that. Rather, he urged, say, say, I will heal people. I'll heal people's pain. I will live a life that gives people peace. He asked the students to design their lives in a verb manner, manner of a verb, and try to live like that. 
I will conclude the sermon. What does God expect from us who medita medita meditated on the book of Hebrews? God gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, for us. Being saved by that grace, we want to be praising, praying, and meditating on the Lord all the time. But if, you, if our life were to stop there, it would be like a, a body floating in the air with our feet not touching the ground. You're floating around in joy, but your feet are floating. Today's word tells us to live with our feet firmly fixed on the ground, walking and doing the Lord's work, loving our brothers and sisters, and helping the strangers. This is our calling. And this Lord gives us a promise today. I will never forsake you, nor will I ever leave you. What does this mean? The Lord says, I'm in charge of your life. So do not be afraid anymore. Do not worry about anything. That is, the Lord will take care of you. Are we ready to accept the word of God today and confess as in verse 6, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can a man do to me? Do we believe that the Lord holds our present and our future? Then we now ask, Lord, how should I live today, here and now? Let us pray. Let's take uh, a few moments to pray individually, to think about the word that we heard today and meditate on the word. Then I'll close with my prayer. Heavenly Father, who gave the life of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, for us. Thank you for the new life that you have given us. Now, as we listen to your word today, Lord, may we strive to love one another. Show hospitality to strangers. Make an effort to visit and comfort those who are in difficult circumstances. Avoid all impure thoughts and actions and not fall in the temptation of loving money. Lord, help us all to walk our life path with the assurance that you give us as you are always with us. In Jesus' precious name, we surrender our prayer. Amen.